Hello everyone, my name is Thiago Santos, I'm from Sao Paulo, Brazil. I am 27 years old and I have been modeling for about 10 years now. I would like to start by telling you my story. Like I actually want to start telling you my testimony. I'm Christian, like I try to follow Jesus Christ's path. There's only one way. Yeah, so I'd like to share my testimony with you guys. So. <clears throat> I was born in Brazil and until I was about like eight years old, I was Catholic. Yeah, so I would just follow my mom actually because like she would go to Catholic church and I'll go with her and then she actually did a little bit of, um, I'm not really sure, I don't want to say something that might not be correct, but it was not like church, it was like more like a sect or something like that, I guess I can call it that. Anyways. But it was not like a personal decision, you know, like it was like just following my mom. But eventually my mom um, turned from Catholicism to evangelism. So both are Christians, in case you guys don't know. But one believes that Mary is holy, for instance, like Catholic people, from what I know, believe that Mary is holy. And not only Mary, but like I guess the apostles or like some, some other people besides God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit which are the only holy uh, being uh, worthy of worship for evangelic Christians. But yeah, so we moved from Catholic, like Catholic faith to evangelic faith. And I, again, just followed my mom. It was not a personal decision. It was just me following my mom. But eventually, I actually accepted uh, Jesus Christ's payment for my debt. Um, a few a couple of times and I, I i think i thought it was actually a way of evangelizing people kind of because i remember that since i was a kid i don't know nobody would be so concerned that i was going in front so many times but i realized at one point as i went other people would come with me so like maybe people were like doubting if they should go or not and as i went they were like okay i'm not gonna be the first one kind of like that so i kind of used it to bring more people to the front with me i don't know if that counts as evangelization or I don't know but uh, I don't know I remember that uh, in the back of my head somehow but yeah so I was th I mean I made that decision uh, a couple of times I don't know I don't know you should only accept God one time and that should be enough right um, I don't know how theological uh, correct I am and all that I'm going to say but I'm going to say what I believe uh, to, be, to be true and <clears throat> yeah I hope um, God can use me somehow to talk to you guys. I think I should pray, right? So, God, sorry, I didn't pray until now. But I pray that you would use me and everything I may ever do to, um, first of all, that we would have a good relationship, you and I, and that through our relationship, you would reach out to other people and, and help them to have a relationship with you as well. Above all, every way, Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yeah, so then uh, I was going to church with my mom and my family. Uh, my mom was the first one in my family to accept Jesus. My sister and I accepted Jesus secondarily, if I remember well. And then my dad came to to the faith with us. And we went through a lot of stuff. I guess the most important thing is that... Um, not most important thing, but like a big like important thing about what we went through that relates to the faith thing is that my dad used to have a great job and then he lost a job and through like bad decisions some decisions were based on what we believed uh to be god speaking through other people so we <clears throat> we actually eventually lost um the two apartments that we had and a house that we were buying one apartment was fully paid and yet the, the second apartment and the house were still being paid but like it was our possession and we lost it, you know? It was not fully paid, but I guess we can say we owned it. I don't know, like financially speaking, maybe it's not the most accurate, but yeah, I mean, if we were to finish the pay, we would be ours. Anyways, well, we're not, we, we, we lost every, pretty much every, like we say we lost everything. Of course, we didn't lose everything. We still had each other. We still mainly had God, which is the most important thing that we could ever uh, have but yeah we lost pretty much everything we owned <clears throat> or partially owned which didn't did not include the cars we had so we actually spent a night sleeping my dad and i in one car and my mom and my sister is sleeping in another car and then 
Um, yeah. Oh man, that was sad. Um, yeah, I mean, I could go through the small things about like, I don't know, I'm writing a book by the way, I'm writing an autobiography. So I'll be more detailed about my life, my testimony and everything that I've gone through in the book. But I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit of my testimony. So I'm not gonna go through everything. And I'm getting a little emotional now. So I don't wanna, I don't know, I don't wanna go there right now. I write it on the book and I hope you guys hear it. Uh, yeah, because I, I plan on doing an audio book since I don't read a lot. I like to listen to books, but I will first write the book. So I hope you guys read it. And if you don't he read it, you can hear it later. Or I don't know, just ask me whatever and I might tell you another time. But so yeah, we slept one night in the car. We actually lived with my aunt for about a week. And eventually we found a place to live and we moved to that place yeah but then like our relationship with god was really shaken by this loss which is sad nothing should shake our relationship with god we should really have a strong base knowing that if we have money or not we have health or not we should stick with god but we're we we're still um i don't know fallible human uh, beings and like we make uh, bad uh, choices and stuff so we at least my dad and my sister and I we were weakened by this uh, by this I'm assuming my mom too but she was the one that showed the least we still continue to go to church from what I remember but eventually my dad stopped going my sister didn't stop going just then or she did at one point as well and then at one point I, I I also chose to not go anymore. I was just really disappointed. As I said, like sure my parents they made the decisions that they made, but or I I changed the lights because no one was bothering me more than this one. I'm not sure. Anyways, but yeah, I mean we made the decisions. My parents made the decisions, but um, I still today actually um, I give my dad like I I am proud of my dad for believing so blindly and ah it's hard though because like of course he shouldn't have like just i don't know if he should i mean he he just dove in you know like people told him to do this and he did it but it was not i don't think it was god through these people and if so like we were not strong enough to stick to it until we could see the other uh like the real end of it of everything so yeah i mean so all of that to say that because um we pretty much lost a lot of our possessions based on decisions we made on people that were saying that they were um giving us those suggestions from god um i i didn't want to have anything to do with these people uh neither with the church as an organization yeah, so I didn't want to go to church anymore. I, I, I would say that I had a relationship with God. Yeah, that I was fine, but I didn't want to have to do anything with God or like with the church. Yeah, I guess like a lot of people can relate to that because I don't know a lot of people were, were hurt uh, with people in church. And I'm assuming that's one of the biggest reasons why people who were in church at one point uh, don't go anymore. Of course, there are other reasons, but I think that's the first one or at least one of the biggest. But yeah, so uh, I was just upset and with the people and, and stuff. So I stopped going. That was already like about to be high school time or already high school time. I used to go to a computer course. I was learning like the basics of computers and stuff like that. A friend of mine who used to uh, attend this course as well, he, um, he was Christian. He, thank God, is still Christian. And he came up um he would start like talk about god with pretty much everybody and he he was pretty cool he was normal you know like he was not like the people i used to know from church who dressed like very conservatively i'm um, sorry my english is not perfect but i'm trying anyways he he would just wear normal clothes <laughs> that was the start and he would talk normal as well he he was just like a normal kid you know and he was just talking about how God was normal as well. He was cool. He was not like this uh, punisher or I don't know. He was he was a different God than what I had known from back in the church, at least from what I remember. 
and I was like kind of intrigued by it. It's kind of cliche, I guess, my story, but it's my story. Uh, cliches, I believe, that come from a, a, a real uh, place and they just happen often and then people call it a cliche. But anyways, that's what happened. I was kind of intrigued and I was like, I mean, I didn't have anything against God and especially if God was cool like that, you know, like and allowed us to be cool. Because I remember like while we were going to these other churches back when I was a kid, I remember we could not watch TV. Uh, men could not wear shorts. Women had to wear long um, sleeved clothes and pretty clothes here as well. If not like turtleneck, you know, I don't know if turtleneck, I don't know if that's the name, but like the long ones, right? So um, that's that's pretty much the kind of uh, Christianity that I, that we moved to when we became evangelical Christians. So we couldn't we like we couldn't play soccer. We couldn't um, um, do much, you know. Like uh, the second apartment that my parents uh, had, we had pools like swimming pools over there, but we could not swim. Um, we had soccer fields and like sport fields there, but we couldn't play sports. You know, it was like really weird. From what I remember, we couldn't do that kind of stuff. And like those, from what, what I understand now, um, were rules that were created by men to, I don't know. I don't know exactly for what reason, but they were not from God. You know, that's the main point from what I understand. I don't believe they were from God. Um, so yeah, so we couldn't do a lot of things and now this guy came up and he was saying, no, it's like, you can, like, you know, you can do everything pretty much like, and God is really cool and stuff. Um, uh, and I was like, okay, this is weird. I don't know, but I, I'll listen to it, you know? And then one time he invited me to go to a retreat or something like that. And with a lot of young people too. And I was like, okay, sure. Let's try it. So I went with him and some friends and there, like I heard the word of God and I accepted God again, like I recommitted my life to God. Uh, not like the times that I did it when I was a kid. Like I, I really try to, okay, let's try to do it again. You know, I guess from what I remember, like I was just like, okay, let's do it. I remember that I was still with like, some influence from, from the other uh, aspect of like Christianity that I had met before. So like there were some things that were not like, it was not like perfect, you know, like, but I, I started, um, uh, to try again to follow God. So if you guys want to know more, come again next time. I'll continue to tell my story. And yeah, I hope you guys can, I don't know, at least be entertained by this. But really, I hope, I don't know, as I said in the beginning, the first thing is that, I don't know, that God would be able to talk to you guys somehow, you know? That you guys can have motivation for more. Like, I, I've always been a dreamer and I still am. And I'm trying to do a lot of things still. So minimum expectation is that I, I would hope you guys, I don't know, be would have some something more than entertainment, you know, like out of this videos. So I don't want to just entertain you guys here. Sure, uh, I might be entertaining. One could say so. I don't know about that, but I just hope to to sow a little more than just entertainment in your soul. You know, like I hope you guys can be moved not only to be emotionally moved and cry a little bit, or even if, if that's the case for anybody there, but I hope that somehow something that I said here or that I'll ever say will, will move you guys forward to towards like your goals, your dreams, your passions, something, man. I don't want to just be a little funny guy or not that funny guy who makes videos on YouTube, Instagram, whatever. I want to to change the world that's what i posted today on instagram what i wrote i made a little graffiti about so yeah i hope you guys have a great life i wish you guys the best thank you for your time and yeah god bless you see you guys later don't forget to like and subscribe my channel i am starting to invest into my blog vlog youtube channel whatever let's do this guys we can do this together not only the blog channel whatever but life we can do life together i think we can we can make it we can make it count we can make a great life let's do it man ah i'm hungry baby let's go god bless you guys see you later oh.